This is the Balkan Adventures podcast. Everyday life and experiences in the Western Balkans. That's right, life and experience, everyday life and experiences in the Western Balkans. Welcome along to the podcast. I'm David Bailey, an Englishman in the Balkans. And uh, yeah, time for another weekly update. Hopefully we won't get banging noises uh, if I hit the table. I'm sat outside. Uh, as I have been for the last few podcasts, still here on Chiovo Island uh, in the Adriatic, 1800, that's six o'clock in normal time. Uh, I've got a bit of a sniff and I might sneeze. Um, I'm not going to edit that out. And there goes another aircraft taking off uh, from Split Airport. I don't know where it's going to. Uh, I should have my mobile device with me so I can quickly um, crank up an app to tell you where all the departures are going to from split this evening but you should never do that when you're doing a podcast especially when you're recording because every time something comes in it makes a terrible sort of like metallic noise uh, and spoils um, your uh, listening pleasure thank you very much and anyway for letting me join you wherever you are in the gym out on a run cutting up onions at home or even studying whatever you're doing and it would be really cool if you could just drop me a line and tell you tell me um where you normally um listen to the podcast uh, <clears throat> and I have to say as well uh, I've been looking at the statistics for the podcast and it's growing week on week um, I am totally amazed and for that I thank you very very much uh, indeed this week was supposed to be all about leaving the Balkans I've got to do a little bit more research but uh, I know that uh, Rob Law in particular would like to find out why young people really want to leave here um, I, I, it, it could be a very easy answer but I don't think um, an easy answer is what we're looking for here. Uh, I'll try and put some context to it. So just give me a little bit more time, would you, Rob, uh, and anybody else? Um, yeah. And the other question was, why do I like living um, where I do here in the Western Balkans, whether it's, you know, these days that I've had here on the Adriatic Coast? It's day 35 at the moment, but we could be going home on Wednesday. Um, we might be going back a few days early because the person that we've replaced to do what we're doing here is coming back from the Netherlands. Um, and I have started on Instagram TV. If you're into video and you're into uh, using Instagram, you'll know that Instagram is a place where, well, which was started to put quality photographs and quickly degenerated into the selfie center of the world and then changed to a platform where people could document their lives uh, using photography and limited amounts of videography and as the Instagram app has progressed and progressed and progressed <coughs> it's now got Instagram TV where certain um, accounts can publish video up to an hour in duration but the rest of us are up to 10 minutes uh, called Instagram TV or IGTV uh, I find it very interesting vertical video because that's what uh, Instagram is all about it's not about those cinematic uh, landscape um, types of videos that you see on Vimeo and YouTube but uh, I've started to use that and uh, Ilaria asked a question on one of my um, or uh, asked a question from what I asked on my Instagram stories about why I like being in the Balkans and I started off uh, explaining and giving two answers to two particular parts because that also is a very complex uh, question to ask why do I like being here um, is it the food? Is it the people? Is it the culture? Is it the weather? Uh, is it because it's cheaper than anywhere else in Europe? And so on and so on and so on. Uh, rather than give all those answers in one blow, I answered two, which were about culture and family. So if you want to check out that, um, you can find that on Instagram TV. The account is an Englishman in the Balkans. That's all one word. Uh, if you're on YouTube, uh, I think I put the vertical video there. So if you're worried about watching vertical video on YouTube, please don't. As long as you're watching on a mobile device such as a laptop, uh, sorry, such as a tablet, a laptop, goodness, um, uh, a tablet or a phone, and you put YouTube onto full screen, then a vertical video now will take up the whole of the screen real estate. So you'll get um, the full um, viewing uh, experience. But this last seven days has been um, interesting. The project that uh, I came here for myself to do to undertake 
It's getting near the end now, and it wasn't a project where I'm making something uh, or developing a business or anything like that. It's been more of a... Uh, to say finding myself sounds a little bit twee, doesn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. It was just taking myself out of the environment that I've been in um, for the last decade and a half and just seeing if I can tweak things to make my life a little bit more tolerable. Uh, and that has had uh, considerable success for me, especially in my attitude and approach to using social media um, and how to create content. Uh, I've learned some more content creation skills. And what, uh, from the research that I've done and looking at you know, analytics that I get, um, what I should be making that people find interesting about this region because um, it's very underserved on the internet, especially Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is over the Dinaric Alps. I can see the Dinaric Alps on the other side of the uh, <coughs> water from me. Uh, that's all involved, well, seems to be uh, when you, you know, Google or Bing or whatever your favorite browser is, when you start to put in Bosnia, Bosnia Herzegovina um, as a search term, it normally comes back with either corruption, um, dysfunctionality, or the war that ended over 25 years ago. Not positive things, and not things that you know that I want to concentrate on. Um, I did take some advice <coughs> from a uh, a YouTube SEO expert and said you need to write. Um, some posts about the war and I said well I'm not going to do that and he said well you're not going to get any viewers then so that was a decision made for me I'll just stick uh, with the way that I'm going but as I said <clears throat> it's been a good uh, seven days past um, it's been windy the maestral wind that uh, pops its head up at about 11 o'clock every morning and then calms down at about six or seven in the evening has been blowing uh, <coughs> excuse me um, quite strong this past week Hence, if you've seen any content that I've been putting up, uh, there's not been much drone footage because the drone is really rocking and rolling uh, up in the sky and um, taking it two, three, four hundred metres away from me. Um, I just don't want to risk it. I just don't have the money to replace the drone. If it decides to do a flyaway or if something happens and, you know, the wind, the turbulence turns it over, then it's gone. So I'm being a little bit um, careful with that. Another aircraft going off. This one is uh, Wizz Air. <coughs> I know that because of uh, I'm a bit of a spotter. Uh, I know people are going to immediately comment and say, "Oh, you're a spotter." I used to, yeah, I used to be an aircraft spotter when I was a kid. I used to live near Heathrow Airport, for, for goodness' sake. So droning, um, the droneography aspect to the trip has been cut back a bit because of the wind. Of course, I should be getting up at five o'clock in the morning when it's only about three kilometres an hour, and then you know doing some nice aerial photography um then but to be honest you know i'm getting on now and um it's all about enjoying life and not being regimented and disciplined to get up at five o'clock it's just not me anymore so that's why that is but the big news if you like the highlight of this particular area has been the opening of a brand new bridge that now spans chiovo with the mainland and stops the hundreds of thousands of tourists having to clog up the very quaint um, old Venetian town of Trogir, which is about two and a half, three kilometers away from me from where I'm sitting at the moment. And normally it takes an hour to an hour and a half to negotiate that um, small place and a tiny bridge that was built hundreds of years ago uh, for people then to fan out across the island. Brand new bridge. There's a vlog on Facebook. There's a vlog on YouTube and a video on Vimeo. Uh, all to do with an Englishman in the Balkans and you can see that brand new bridge and I have to say um, I'm talking to somebody the other day and they said hardly any traffic now compared to previously of course uh, in Trogir so it's all been about um, the bridge we went down or I went down to see that um, a few hours after it had opened uh, and it was yeah it's it's a nice engineering feat it opens in the middle to let high mastered yachts through so if you're coming to the Adriatic uh, and you want to come to Chilvo but when you go online, you see that there's horrific um, traffic lineups, queues, whatever you want to call them. Take it from me, those are no longer relevant. There's a brand new bridge. Do come. Uh, come and stay in this area. It is a bit pricey, I have to say. It shocked me, uh, some of the prices. But I think the benefits of being here 
a phenomenal. Although there are a lot of people swimming, a lot of people rotisserieing them, rotisserieing, rotisserieing. Can we say that? <clears throat> barbecuing them, basically, barbing them, barbecuing themselves on the beach. There's still stacks and stacks and stacks of space, um, and it's it's very very safe, uh, low crime rate. I, I I would I would definitely give it a blast. Just come along, Chiovo, C I, but well, it's got a V on it, Ch- uh, C I O V O, and it's right next to um, uh, Trogir. There's also a new vlog coming out. By the time you listen to this, it will be live on an Englishman in the Balkans dot com. Uh, it's about a visit to a church, a rather remote church, uh, on the eastern penin- an eastern tip. Uh, of the island please do check it out once again that's an absolutely gorgeous place lovely hike to get there um beautiful uh, blue pristine blue sea uh, as you look over the southern coast of the island uh, out right over the horizon uh, where italy is it's amazing uh, and i hope that uh, the, the the videography that i managed to do um shows you that so another reason um to come here and the last thing to talk about in this uh, bit of a ramble at the moment is I've just launched a newsletter. I've wanted to do it for years, but I was really worried about spamming people. But um, if you uh, would like to keep up to speed with what is happening on blog posts, uh, videos and vlogs, um, and the podcast as well, then maybe subscribing to what I'm hoping to start as a weekly newsletter might mean that uh, getting an email popping up in in your inbox uh, with a link exactly to where those pieces of content are might be easier than having to troll through reams and reams and reams of information on other social media platforms, definitely Twitter, without a doubt Facebook, um, and maybe also um, on Instagram as well. If you do want to subscribe, just check out the blog and englishmaninthebalkans.com. There's a little subscribe box. Uh, everything complies with European Union uh, data standards now, so your data will not be abused. Um, just fill it out, and then you'll get um, the weekly newsletter. And I'm hopefully going to have some competitions or so. So that's it. <clears throat> An update from the front. Ah, oh, one important thing. As part of my retreat, um, the project, I was trying to work out how I could deal with Facebook. Now, there was a bit of confusion a few days ago when I said I'm not going to post anything more on my timeline. Only on my Facebook page for an Englishman in the Balkans and the Facebook group. But even so, you know, when you open it up on your laptop or wherever, there it is. There's the news feed full of all sorts of negativity. And I have to say that there's very little that comes up in my feed Um, to be honest with you, that has got anything of a positive nature. If I need to find out things from friends, friends contact you, right, through Facebook. Um, And that's what I like about, you know, if you're going to be a friend, you need to have that sort of half uh, real life uh, link to it rather than just find out everything about your friends through um, the Facebook news feed. And it is also a major distraction so you, there's your news feed, you see it, you start scrolling through, and the next minute you're 20, 30 minutes gone. You've watched videos that you wouldn't otherwise be interested in watching, but you just do it. Uh, and then, of course, if there's any negativity, political or whatever, uh, you can either you know, get your own biased view reinforced, or if there's something that you don't particularly agree with, uh, then it just annoys you and you know, negativity s- sets in. And it's been a real... Um, task for me to cope with that until this afternoon yep thanks to dr google i now have and i use the chrome browser so i use you know chrome as as my um, browser of choice my search engine of choice and um i downloaded and installed an extension for chrome it's called kill newsfeed uh i had grave doubts that anything could possibly work to solve my situation installed it put it on refresh my facebook and my newsfeed has disappeared all that has gone 
So now I can use Facebook without having to be distracted by the news feed. Um, and I'm, I'm great. I can go to my Facebook page where people engage with me about being in the Balkans, reply, comment to uh, content that I put up, which is really, really nice and definitely appreciated. I can go to my group where other people can post content. Um, and I just feel automatically, I don't know, relieved. Mm. Tomorrow's job, can I do the same for my mobile phone? Because if I can, that's it. I'm, I, I'll already start to feel a lot better. So life in the Western Balkans for a retired Englishman. I'm an in-betweener, by the way, um, because I'm not a resident. Sorry, I'm not a citizen of Croatia. I'm not a citizen of Bosnia-Herzegovina or Serbia or Montenegro, Macedonia, anywhere else in, in the Balkans. So I'm definitely not a citizen of any country. But I'm also not a tourist. And um, a few of us online came up with using the word uh, an in-betweener. So life as an in-betweener. What have I got to do? I've got to start researching the next podcast so that uh, I can answer Rob's question and uh, Dee's as well. She asks the same. If you want to find out the start of why, or my answers rather, to why I like being in the Balkans, then do check out Facebook, IGTV or YouTube where it's uh, there's a vlog up there about why I like being where I am. Thank you so much for listening. Um, and I will catch you next week here on the Balkan Adventures podcast. Stay safe, please. To find out more about us and where we live, why not check out our blog at anenglishmaninthebalkans.com. See you next time.